This is Yvonne Strahovski, and you're listening to Chuck versus the podcast. Hi, my name is Graham Jones, but you can call me Gray. This is my show. It's about Chuck. It's filled with interviews, the latest news, crazy co-hosts, and spoilers that'll make your day. Oh, wait, wait, I need to go back. I host these TV nights. They used to be pretty boring, but everything changed when I found NBC's new show, Chuck. Pretty soon, my TV night got pretty crowded. Guys I didn't even know were showing up the door. Big important guys. Really scary, nasty, get killed for hosting them guys. Next thing I know, these super episodes are downloaded into my brain. Which means every moment of my life, I'm thinking about Chuck. ChuckTV.net sent their top people to protect me. That's Mel and Liz. They're pretty zany. They co-host with me now as a cover. So now I must welcome you to Chuck vs. the Podcast. The number one TV podcast for NBC's Chuck. This is Gray. This is Mel. And this is Liz. And we want to welcome you to Chuck vs. the Podcast, episode 21 for Friday, May 1st, 2009. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty well coming off the season finale. That was awesome. Absolutely. We have a lot to discuss following the exciting final few episodes of the season, plus the fan renewal campaign. And we finally decided to just split the discussion up into two podcasts, or you guys would be sitting listening for days. That's right. This week, we'll be talking about the renewal campaign, including lots of listener emails in response to last week's All-Star Rally podcast. Then next week, we'll tackle episode commentary for the last four episodes of Chuck Season 2. Yeah, and, and I know a lot of People are probably thinking, how could we possibly top last week's episode? And we can't, but we do have a treat this week. Uh, people were wondering where Yvonne Strahovski was, and we can not only tell you where she was, but we also have a little mini interview with her. And it was so exciting to talk to her. She really wanted to reach out to the fans to thank them for their support. So we are sure that you're going to be encouraged when you hear from her later in the podcast. But for now, the news. Well, first up, we've got the ratings for the Chuck finale, and it's another kind of good news, eh, news situation. Uh, I know we were all hoping for a really huge ratings jump based on all of the publicity leading up to the finale, but we didn't get that. So that's kind of the eh news. But the good news is that Chuck held steady with an estimated 6.199 million viewers and a 2.4 in that all-important 18 to 49 demo that the advertisers crave. And, you know, shout out to Subway there. Um, those numbers did um, adjust up from the overnight. So if you saw the overnight ratings first, that is a little bit higher. Something we wanted to point out is that if you compare the that night's ratings across the board to two weeks prior, which is when the last time all of the networks had had new episodes on, Chuck is the only one that even held steady, let alone it, it ticked up just a smidge compared to two weeks ago. Everything else lost viewers. So Chuck's the, the show that's holding steady in that time slot, which is encouraging. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean for Chuck's chances at a third season? Well, we're still optimistic. So be sure to keep an eye on ChuckTV.net for the official announcement that'll be coming on or before May 5th. We hope to have good news for you soon. Absolutely. And I do want to say a big thank you. I noticed a big spike in votes at Podcast Alley, uh, especially right after the rally podcast last week. And uh, so I do want to urge you, definitely that is also another way that you can support us by, by giving us votes at Podcast Alley. But the finale and a footlong event was absolutely amazing. Um, and I could give a little bit of extra background. A lot of people have seen the Zachary Levi video of him going with literally 400 fans at the Birmingham, UK Convention Center, where he was appearing with uh, at the Star Fury T1 convention. And he went with 400 fans to a nearby subway shop. He even got behind the counter and served sandwiches for two hours. And if you've seen the video, he was smiling the whole time. He posed for pictures with every sub that he made. <laughs> and, and, and it was just really generous of him to do that. But what a lot of people don't realize is he was exhausted. I had actually spoken to him when when we did the interview for the rally last week. He had been up for something like 26 hours, and yet he was still taking an interview from me. And he had other interviews scheduled. He This was a guy that that shouldn't have had that kind of energy, and yet he did, and he did it for the fans. And so that's that's awesome. Also send your photos of Finale and Footlong to Mel at ChuckTV.net, and we'll make sure that we get those posted on the site and also in the podcast. You can see lots of photos of really excited Chuck fans with their Subway sandwiches at ChuckTV.net, and we hope to hear specific news from Subway about how we impacted their sales on Monday. 
At the very least, we do know that they got a ton of free publicity out of this. And many, many thanks to Wendy, who came up with the original idea. She was actually in one of those videos that was posted. Mm -hmm. um, Chuck fans proved that they definitely know how to play the game when they decided to support one of Chuck's most prominent advertisers. And we do urge you to also support other advertisers promoted on the show. And keep up the good work. I wanted to mention that on the ChuckTV.net forum, uh, one of the members posted that, I believe it was his sister-in-law, had been out, had needed to buy a new car. And after last week's episode, I don't know, uh, the Check versus the Colonel, there was a commercial with uh, Zachary Levi in one of the hybrid cars. And she had gone out shopping for car shopping within the next couple of days, and she remembered that commercial. And so she asked her dealer if she could test drive it, and she ended up buying it. Wow. Yeah, because she had seen that commercial on Check. Very cool. And we're like, write to NBC right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Send them your receipt. <laughs> yeah. That's, so, that's, but, that's a lot bigger than a sub. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was impressive. We were all kind of floored, but cheering. And we have some breaking news. This is actually recorded a little later than the rest of the podcast was. But we thought it was very important to get a few details out because it has been a full week. It was actually a really interesting week for me. We recorded the previous part of our podcast on Tuesday. And then uh, I was talking with Mel and Liz and they said, oh, come on, come on. Why don't you do it? Uh, CNN had, had thrown out the gauntlet on Tuesday, I think, to say if you have a webcam, uh, post a video on which show you would like to save and why. And so I, I thought, well, let me try. So I, I set up a, a webcam and recorded a video, and then CNN called me the next day and uh, s confirmed some details from the the, the uh, video, and they asked if I would mind if I got fo focused on in an article, and I said, no, nope, wouldn't mind. So they released an article on Thursday saying that basically Chuck had won their, their poll and, and talking about the fan campaign, which was awesome. It was right on their main entertainment page and, and even on the main CNN.com page for a while. Um, and had a link to a video of yours truly, which you can still check out. Uh, if you go to CNN.com, go to the entertainment section and look for a news item called Save Chuck. And then down very near the bottom of the article, there's a link saying Podcaster Pleads Chuck's Case. And you can see my little spiel online. And, and that was cool. But then that actually led to something else. They called me again on Friday and asked if I would mind being on television. And so they they said that they wanted to put together an interview with, uh, with showrunner Josh Schwartz and star Zachary Levi and myself on TV. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I wouldn't mind at all. <laughs> so that's tentatively set up for Monday, May 4th, between 12 and 2 p.m. Eastern. So do watch CNN for us on Monday. It may still not happen, uh, depending on... Um, they, they said you always have to be prepared that there could be breaking news that, that might preempt it. And also depending on Josh and Zach's schedules. Do watch for us on CNN this week, Monday, Tuesday. Um, it, you might just see me on the air. All right. Way to represent, great. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, definitely. I couldn't have imagined at the beginning of the week that that was going to happen. That was very, very cool. If you need to get some extra energy, um, I believe that uh, the Wonka company has some ideas for us to get a surge. Yes, uh, the Wonka company, the makers of Nerds Candies, they'll be making a delivery to um, executives at NBC. This is based on an idea that came from Josh Schwartz in an interview um, in the New York Times that was published back in a um, April 20th. And uh, he suggested that fans sh uh, show their support by sending nerds to NBC. And um, as a matter of fact, we've there's pictures on chucktv.net of uh, Josh Gomez and Zach standing there with a big giant giant box of nerds and they're they're pretty cute um, so yeah go ahead and send in your nerds <laughs> that was so unexpected we got that um, press release late Friday that Wonka was going to deliver a thousand cases of nerds candy to NBC to join in the fan campaign 
to save mm-hmm. check. And we were like, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> Completely cool. Completely out of the blue. Exercise your inner nerd. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but we should mention that, you know, Josh Schwartz said, we are talking about the the Wonka nerds, the candy nerds, not the people. Because that would take, a, you know, cost too much to ship. And there might be some federal regulations about that as well. So <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> And giving definition to the term breaking news, how about this? We have just heard that it is quite possible that Chuck has been renewed. Nikki Fink at Deadline Hollywood Daily is reporting that Chuck has been renewed and that NBC will officially announce it on Monday. And this is, of course, despite earlier reports even as late as Friday that it might be another one to two weeks before the announcement is made. Apparently, there were some security leaks at NBC that NBC is desperately trying to plug, but that would explain why they had proposed one to two weeks delay and then had to retract that and now announce it early. Also, lending more credence to this is that Fink never publishes definitive statements like this without plenty of confirmation. So we definitely are fairly optimistic about this. Not 100%. This is not the official word, but we are pretty optimistic, uh, and we presume that NBC will announce this very soon, perhaps even when you hear this podcast. So, perhaps some good news. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming. Speaking of awesome uh, rally cries, we do have a really great one to share from you from Yvonne Strahovski. As as Gray mentioned earlier, she's on location in Australia filming a new movie called I Love You Too. And Gray, why don't you give us some background here on on, uh, how this all came about? Well, we we had sent her emails with along with all the other people that we had contacted. And um, we were told by her publicist, don't have high expectations because she is literally in, in the middle of Australia and really hard to contact. And that did prove to be the case. And to make matters worse, what I found out from her when she did get in contact with me was that her BlackBerry died. And that was literally her connection to the outside world. And once she had lost that, she literally lost all of her contact information for anybody. And she was in a place in Australia where she couldn't access it. So as soon as she did get back into contact with the rest of the world, uh, she sent me an email at literally 20 minutes before the the finale aired and said, I'm ready, let's do it. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so I called her in Australia and uh, we just were able to get a, a little interview together, but she did absolutely want to be thanking the fans for their efforts and she really conveyed that if she had gotten the message sooner, she would have loved to have been part of the rally. So we're going to play that in interview now. Hi, it's Gray here from Chuck vs. Podcast. Oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, thanks. I, I actually just got your email. Um, we were out at Subway buying uh, lots of Subway sandwiches. Oh, right. Because today's the finale. Yeah, today's the finale just in actually 15 minutes. And so we're being part of that finale in a footlong thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know how much you've heard about it, but Zach actually was at a convention and he took 400 people to Subway. <laughs> Oh my god, that's awesome! Yeah, and I guess one of the one of the higher ups in Subway has already called NBC and said, "Do not cancel Chuck because this is incredible advertising." Wow, that's amazing! That's amazing what he just got everyone from at the convention to to go to Subway. Yeah, oh, it's it's hilarious. There's there's videos on YouTube. And uh, and you can see they're just having a ride. Actually, Zach got behind the counter and was making the subs for everybody. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. So actually, the the rally has kind of come and gone, but there there were a lot of people that were um, commenting, boy, I wish Yvonne had been part of it. Yeah, I, I, I wish I could have been part of the rally. Um, <laughs> I've, I've been out of communication the last couple of weeks. Lovely Blackberry uh, died. It actually decided to wipe all my contacts and my entire life off it. So I've um, I've recently been back into contact on email, but um, that's about it. I've also, I've been traveling a little bit in Australia, just on a bit of a break for ten days, and I'm down here uh, working on a movie, and uh, so I haven't I've, I haven't been in contact. 
until I got back. So I, I wish I could have been part of it. Clearly, there's a lot going on. I'm missing out on everything. I mean, I, I'm so bummed, first of all, that I am i haven't even seen um, the last four episodes. I think the last one I saw was... Um, Wow, God, the one with um, Trisha in it from Battlestar Galactica. I think that was the last one I saw. Oh, wow. Because I've been in Australia and no website here is letting me download any of the episodes because, of course, they haven't aired here in Australia yet. So, mm-hmm. oh, I'm really, I, I just really want to see some of the episodes and I'm so jealous um, everyone's getting to watch the finale tonight and I haven't even seen my own show. <laughs> oh, no. Well, they, they've been absolutely awesome. Going on to the fan uh, efforts, so if, if you've been out of contact for 10 days, you've missed quite a lot um, because the last 10 days, everything has just heated up. I mean, the WB.com is driving nerdmobiles around Del- Los Angeles, and they have a contest going on. Um, people are just, I mean, flooding in with, with ideas on, on different things that they're doing. There's tons of letters that are being sent to NBC, and then this huge subway thing is just... I mean, it's massive. Everybody's going out and buying tons of Subway sandwiches today. Wow. So knowing that all the fans are doing that to help Chuck be renewed, um, what do you think of all those fan efforts? Uh, I'm in absolute amazement and shock. Uh, I've, I'm so very grateful for everybody's contribution. I, I, I just can't believe the response that we're getting and... To, for people to show their support in all those different ways. I had no idea people were um, <laughs> driving the nerd herders around Los Angeles. I mean, that's awesome. I wish I was in L.A. to go buy a, a, a footlong <laughs> sandwich because I want to be part of it. Maybe someone can go buy one on my behalf. If you buy one in Australia, you can say, I bought one in Australia and I'm supporting Chuck. Oh wow! Okay, and how, but how do I say? Who do I say that to? Uh, you can go onto the subway dot com website, and there's a comment page um, where you can you can give a comment, or just tell the store manager where you where you're buying it. Just say I'm buying this because I'm supporting Chuck. Oh wow! Okay, well may, I should I should go into Subway and and buy one and take a photo of it and email it to <laughs> Subway. Yeah, yeah, and email it to us too. That that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I should. Cool and. Uh, so why do you think Chuck needs a third season or, or merits a third season? Well, Chuck needs a third season because the show needs to go on. I mean, we're such a great show, and clearly we have so much support out there, and people watch our show. We've got to keep going. I mean, the storylines um, are getting more and more intense. Um, we've In these last couple of seasons, we've really developed strong characters and the characters' lives are changing before our eyes, and you know, in every episode. And um, there's only going to be more exciting storylines to go uh, on with if if we do a third season. Where can you see Chuck going now, after the after the finale has happened? Uh, Chuck is going to probably head in a very different direction uh, than what we have all seen in these last couple of. Um, seasons uh if i tell you I, I can't really talk about things i'm going to spoil it for you and what what would you like to see out of your character in the third season um oh wow <laughs> i'd like to see my character go to paris on a mission um <laughs> um obviously i would like to see the chuck sarah relationship develop a little bit more um and it'd be really great to potentially maybe bring back, um, you know, like Sarah's dad or something or or meet somebody else from her family. I love it when we do those episodes and when we go back into our character's past and and see where we've all come from and why we are the people that we are in the show, you know. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Actually, I've got people buzzing up to uh, come watch the finale with me, so <laughs> I better get going. <laughs> okay, well, have fun, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to go buy a Subway. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for taking the time. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. You know, it's been wonderful to hear from the cast and creative team this past week, knowing that they were as excited about the finale as we were and that they were grateful for our efforts just pumped us up even more. 
and um, it, it's just great. I, I knew Yvonne wouldn't wouldn't have wanted to miss any of this. So I'm I'm just stoked and really excited that she was able to be a part of all of this with us. Me too. It's so great to hear from her. And, you know, I just love how invested she is in her character in Sarah Walker. I think that really came through in season two. Everybody's just been blown away by her this season. I can't wait to see what she does in season three. Yep. And and I think what I'm seeing in the forums and, and the comments from the listeners is that people were really, really impressed by how these people were, are not just doing a job, but they're actually really passionate about the show they're invested in the show but they're also fans themselves um specifically ryan mcpartland and bonita friderisi really are fans of the show and it really came across and and so we definitely look forward to having some interviews full interviews set up with them in the next couple of months but we're going to go right into a whole pile of these listener (laughs) comments as we mentioned these are not specific to the episodes. We'll do those in our next podcast, but these ones are specific to the fan campaigns. Mel, what have you got? Well, I do want to uh, preface this by saying that we didn't, we're not going to read every um, email we got on this topic because there were a lot of them that kind of were saying the same thing. So we sort of picked some of them at random that were uh, expressing the same idea. So, it, you know, if you did send it in, we did get it. And we do appreciate you uh, emailing us with your comments and uh, just for time's sake, and again, so you guys aren't sitting here for two days listening to us, we did um, kind of edit down what how many of these we were going to read. So let's start with Ashley S. from San Clemente, California. She writes and she says, hello from California. I think it's safe to say that Chuck is the only show that I feel willing to go the extra mile for, considering I'm prone to extreme laziness. With the Watch Buy Share campaign, all the other great Save Chuck endeavors, and the era of Bimorian patriotism, I feel empowered with nerd zeal. I mean, what other show provides whimsical escapism from grim times, a new mold for the modern-day hero archetype, characters so real you can connect with them at an emotional level, and a plethora of cultural illusions? And I must admit, many references to classic movies would have gone way over my head if my father hadn't introduced me to movies such as Spies Like Us and shows such as Quantum Leap. One would think this show deserves a third season, right? With a letter to the NBC execs in the works, an oddly sudden craving for a $5 tuna footlong from one Subway franchise, check paraphernalia I have purchased on my summer slash part-time job salary, littering the niches of my bedroom, and a desire to preach to the choir about Chuck, I'm proud to be a part of an admirable cause. And to see that such collective fan fervor is reaching the cast and crew of Chuck, and I had a huge smile the entire time while I listened to the episode 20 of this podcast, just makes me feel so proud. Thank you so much for taking the time to read my letter and for providing Chuck fans wonderful insight and commentary on equally wonderful episodes through this podcast. Again, Ashley S. from San Clemente, California. And thank you for writing such an eloquent letter, Ashley. Truly. I, wow, our Chuck fans are educated. Deep thoughts. <laughs> deep, deep, th- deep thoughts from Ashley. You know, we could pretty much just quit right there. <laughs> she said it all. <laughs> she said it well, so... Right. Um, next up, we have uh, Mary Joy, who says, I've been enjoying the podcast. I love when you discussed a recent episode of Chuck. I wanted to share some photos of me dressed as a random nerd herd employee. I wore this costume at my school's homecoming spirit week when one of the days was nerd day. All my friends, classmates, and teachers on campus loved my outfit and even said it was the best outfit they saw all day. Other comments were, isn't that the outfit from Chuck? Because I really like that show. Mary Joy. And she looks pretty cool, too. That is a cool nerd herd outfit. Very cute. Okay, and the next one is from Vince Tong. I recently found your podcast as an avid Chuck fan. It was awesome that you and your colleagues have taken the opportunity to create such a great medium. Since there has been much clamoring about the future of Chuck, when do you folks think that NBC will finally reveal their plans for our beloved show? This show has touched a lot of people, and the characters are ones that we truly care about. Kindest regards, Vince Tong. Well, Mel, you can answer that one. May 5th. That's the date that NBC is scheduled to announce their fall lineup for 2009, and at that point, we will know the fate of Chuck. Cinco de Mayo. Mark your calendars. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Zach actually said, pray. (laughs) Well, he's a spiritual guy, so we'll take that under advisement. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, our next uh, email comes from Braden, and he says, I'm a pretty big TV show watcher, and i got to say with complete honesty, Chuck is the best show on TV. 
It is perfect for all types of audience. It has never it is never gruesome or perverted. It is good, clean cut family fun that deserves more publicity. I guarantee that if NBC marketed the show more and put it in a different spot in the lineup, it would be one of their top shows. If you look at The Office, another NBC comedy, its first season only took in about five million viewers or so. But when they put it in a different time slot and marketed the show more, wham, bam, boom, it became one of the most popular shows on TV. Chuck can do the same thing. We need a season three, especially with a finale like that one, and then a season four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's go, Chuck. Braden. Yeah. I like the way you think, Braden. Yeah. I do too. Eight seasons of Chuck. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. I think Monday has been a killer night for Chuck. Um, it, I, I like that it's with Heroes because I also watched that one, but at the same time, I know being up against Dancing with the Stars and House, I mean, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. It's, it's been widely acknowledged that Mondays at 8 um, Eastern are, is one of the toughest time slots, if not the toughest, on TV right now. So I believe um, that uh, Gray, Liz, and I were, were chatting a little bit last week, and we, in one of our many how to right the world's wrongs bull sessions, decided that Chuck does indeed need to move, and it needs to move to Thursdays at 8. Yep. That was our final decision. Now, NBC hasn't called us to get our opinion on that. <laughs> Oddly but, enough. Yeah. Just in case Ben Silverman's listening, that's our recommendation to you, free of charge. Yep. We aim to please and serve on all levels. That's right. Mm-hmm. But Jacob writes in, and he says, one of the greatest shows on earth 2007 to today has been a great time for television i remember watching the first episode of chuck september 24th 2007 i didn't know what to expect but i was blown away every episode i wanted more and more now we're done with the second season what do you know i want more chuck this show has everything needed to be a great show Violence, technology, a sexy girl, cliffhangers at the end of every episode, and humorous groups of friends. This show is great for everyone, especially the dorks in each family. If admitting my dorkiness brings me a third season of Chuck, then yes, I'm a dedicated true dork. Save Chuck. I'm a (laughs) dork too. True dork. I like that. Right on, Jacob. (laughs) I'm a dork too, so. Yeah, um, part of our national anthem here. In Canada, is true north, strong and free. And I just had a thought: true dork, <laughs> strong and free. There you I go. Love it. <laughs> yep. Okay. And next we have Scarlett. How important is Chuck? Well, I take time out of my day every Monday to watch it. Chuck is a great show. I'm a wife, mother, and full-time nursing major, but I still find time to watch Chuck. Chuck gives me a much-needed break from the daunting reality that is my busy life. My husband and I kick back and relax to a great and comical TV phenomenon. Please bring Chuck back for season three, Scarlet. Wow, that's uh, that's high praise indeed. You know, being a wife and mom is enough. That's two full time jobs right there. But add in that she's a full time nursing major. Yeah, that that gal's got her priorities right, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Scarlet. Yeah. All right. Well, next we have an email from Tessa, and she says, I just wanted to say thank you so much for this podcast. It was really encouraging and exciting to hear from almost the entire cast and crew. I think they should play this podcast for the NBC execs. How could they refuse the third season after listening to all these guys? So, again, thanks. You guys rock. Tessa. Hey, I'm hip to that. <laughs> I know. I think, yeah, I am too. I was just going to say, I think we should, I think that NBC should probably listen to it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's, we need to, you know, send this to Schwartz and Fedak and say, hey, here's your pitch right here. Right. We did all the work for you. (laughs) Well, Melanie says the podcast was brilliant. If there was ever a reason for fans to be involved in the Save Chuck campaign, apart from enjoying the show, that is, it is the fact that we are supporting people who recognize and are appreciative of the support we're giving them. It is nice to see the mutual respect and appreciation and the understanding on both sides that without the fans, there would be no show, and without without a show, there are no fans. I'm not sure if that made any sense, but I certainly hope so. Yes, it did, Melanie. Mm-hmm. Also, it was amazingly edited. I'm guessing Gray edited it? Well, obviously, you edit for a living, sir. Well done, Melanie. Um, yes, I did edit it, and thank you so much. Um, yeah, I do edit for a living, so it's kind of second nature. We are really, really blessed to have Gray as our, our producer and, and host here, um, because, you know, without your editing skills, I don't think that we would 
probably still be on the air, quite frankly. <laughs> you know, if it were up to Liz and I, I don't know that a podcast would ever get released. <laughs> uh-huh. We've got so much else going on that, so we really appreciate you. Cool. Well, I do have to give credit back to Mel because she plans the outlines for all of these podcasts. And without those, we'd be tripping on each other and these would, again, be many years long. <laughs> and I just show up for the cuteness factor. <laughs> she's she's the beauty. I'm the brains. Grace the brawn. I think that's how it yeah. stacks out. <laughs> oh, I was expecting somebody to say beast. Oh, we could go that route too. That's fine. <laughs> cool. Okay, next we hear from Spring Wagon. I'm new to the podcast and I can't believe I didn't get in on it sooner. What a great show yesterday. I really enjoyed hearing from so many of the artists involved in the show. And I was astounded to learn that so many of them pay attention to the fan sites. The Save Chuck campaign has been so much fun to be involved in. And to know that it really may make a difference to the continuance of my favorite show makes it even more important to me. To the Canadian contingent, I'm wondering if it will have an impact if Canadians buy the finale footlong. Thanks for a great podcast. Uh, thanks for your comments. Um, I'm the Canadian contingent here, and I bought seven subs on Monday for my Chuck Knight. Um, you know, to be honest, I I like to think that it that it would. Yvonne asked, actually asked me the same thing. She she wasn't sure if she bought a sub in Australia, if it would make a difference, and I think it does. Uh, just go to their website, and they their website does actually have uh, uh, all the international locations on it. So. Um, I'm guessing that if you're in Australia or you're in Canada or you're in the UK and you say, I went to Subway because I watched Chuck, that they're going to be pleased about that. Yep. And as much free publicity as they have received here, I think that it's actually through the roof. And I did want to mention, I didn't put this in the podcast, so um, don't shoot me, guys. Okay. The, um, <laughs> there, there was a report in one of the advertising um, journals that's online that um, Subway is, in fact, thrilled with their product placement campaign on Chuck. They said it's been tracking, they've been tracking it internally, and it's been through the roof. And, you know, they didn't specifically talk about the fan campaign, but it was alluded to that they have just loved the fact that the, the fans latched on to this finale and a footlong idea and that, you know, they, they're all for it. So, and there was insider and this, you know, this is a legitimate source, but they of course can't name names at this point, but there's a, you know, insiders had reported that a subway executives had called NBC executives and said, we'd love for you to keep Chuck for a third season. So that's, that's pretty cool when you've got the advertiser actually working on it. Yeah. We just saw on an article from uh, Canada, actually, where a spokesman for Subway, um, he, they asked him, you know, what was the impact of the finale in a footlong campaign. And he declined to provide any hard numbers, but he said that there was evidence the campaign boosted sales. And this is a direct quote. I heard a few anecdotal reports of lines out the door at a few Subway locations on Monday, wrote Subway franchisee advertising fund trust public relations manager Mac Bridenbaker in an email. So it sounds like we certainly made an impact with our finale in a footlong campaign, folks. So good job. Very, very cool. Yeah. And uh, now, of course, there are only one advertiser. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe next time it'll have to be um, Call of Duty and a premiere. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I think that would go over just fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, you could have Subway, Call of Duty, and a premiere. Yeah. 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 But rest assured, once we get a word of that third season, we will be coming up with ideas for the premiere. Absolutely. So, and we'll be asking, we'll be enlisting the fans' help again. Yep. So. Well, moving on, we've got Aisha, and she emails and says, Hey, guys, wish you the best of luck from Australia. Even my friends in Malaysia and the Maldives have been working hard flooding NBC and Subway with emails and signing petitions and basically spreading the word. Chuck makes me happy, and life without it would be very bleak. So there's some uh, feedback from Yvonne's native Australia. Mm -hmm. They're they're in on the campaign as well. Cool. Yep, and... and that's an interesting point too. Well, even the friends in Malaysia and Maldives, that that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, when I was speaking to Yvonne, she said that they hadn't even aired season two in Australia yet. Mm-hmm. It's important to know that a lot of the people who are who are supporting the campaigns haven't even seen season two. They're just supporting based on season one alone. So mm-hmm. it, they're they're in for some much better Chuck coming their way very soon. Because I think mm-hmm. season two was, as as great as season one was, season two is even better. It's a whole new level 
especially this last, like the last half of the season. It was just mind blowing how good season two is. So yeah, to our international fans, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yep. Hang on tight. Well, we've got some comments from ChuckTV.net forum, and this one comes from Sis KJ. Am I saying that right? Sisk J. Sisk J. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Regarding the Rally Time podcast, OMG, I'm excited. Beckman sounds like a sweetheart. Bonita is totally right about the women on the show. Aces, Bonnie. Aces. Why does Adam Baldwin keep yelling at me? <laughs> <laughs> now we picked this comment because for one thing sisk j is half of the team that does those fan commentaries for the dvd that uh, lou mentioned a couple of episodes ago uh, she and osiris record those so we encourage you to check those out but also the 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 fan response to benita uh, and her her bit in last week's podcast has been phenomenal. You guys loved her. We loved her. I'm the one that got to talk to her for the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I I so did not want to hang up. I was like, oh my gosh, I have so many questions based <laughs> on what you've just said. Yeah. So she is a, she is such a sweetheart, and we um, we do plan to talk to her again uh, later in you know more extensively. But I just wanted to put that this comment in there because there was such a, a wonderful fan response to her in particular and then you know adam baldwin yelling was just funny <laughs> yeah. well actually I, I can address that one he he does a lot of voiceover work for cartoons um specifically he's done a lot of superman characters in mm -hmm. in uh, some pretty major ca cartoons actually and so it, it was funny as soon as i asked those questions it's almost like he turned on his cartoon voice <laughs> His superhero voice. Yep. Save Chuck. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, moving right along, another forum member, Life is Beautiful. I like that one. Uh, regarding the Rally Time podcast, wow, that was filled with so much awesomeness. It was really great hearing what all of them had to say about the season finale. And hearing Scott Rosenbaum and Phil Klemmer talk about breaking season three made me want the show to come back even more. I didn't think that was even possible. Great <laughs> podcast. Life is beautiful. And yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, to know that they've already mapped it out and and to hear how excited they are. That's the big thing for me is how excited they are about season three. The writers ha had actually told us about the last four episodes and they had, uh, no specifics, but they had told us that they were going to be awesome. And I think they delivered. Uh, and yeah. So when they say that season three is going to be even better than these last four episodes, I believe them. Mm -hmm. Me too. I yeah. mean, it, it was just phenomenal. The finale, I'm still reeling, but got to trust those guys. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, our next uh, comment comes from Claire, also from the ChuckTV.net forum. And she says she's re uh, referring again to last week's podcast. I loved it. I really enjoyed hearing Benita Friedrichsi talk. She sounded so different from General Beckman. Her point about the woman, women on the show was great. Ryan McPartland's story about Chevy Chase talking to him and Joshua Gomez was cute. Thanks for the great podcast. And again, you know, more praise for, for Benita. She does sound so different from her General Beckman character. Mm -hmm. And I did. I loved Ryan McPartland's story. Yeah. Of Chevy Chase sidling up to them. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, he's, he, he was like a kid in a candy store working with Chevy Chase. And you really get that humility. He's like... It's like he was a fan just walking on the set and seeing Chevy Chase is how it came across to me. Yeah. 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 Certainly sounded like that. Okay. Again, from ChuckTV.net forum, we have Agent Secret Fan 8 who says, Greetings. I am new to the board. I've been reading as a guest since about mid-season. I joined today because of the amazing podcast episode 20. My entire family, all eight of us, that's right, I said eight, love the show, and watch or stream online each week. I listened to the podcast last night and was stunned. Mel, Liz, and Gray, hats off to you for putting together such a fun, high-quality episode. I was amazed at the heartfelt, positive sentiment expressed by the cast and creative crew. It was really fun to hear the voices outside the context of their characters, especially for characters like Awesome and The General, who we don't hear as often in the usual media interviews. One of the things noted by several of the contributors on the podcast cast 
was how the show is an option on TV for families, certainly those with older children. My youngest is 13, and it is the only show we watch each week together. So keep up the good work, Mel, Liz, and Gray, and rest assured, my crew, one lives in Australia and streams online, and one lives away in Kansas in college and does likewise. We'll be buying foot-long subways Monday night and watching with great anticipation. We have rewatched The Colonel about five times since Monday, keeping fingers crossed for season three to see what becomes of this wonderful cast of characters. Agent Secret Fan 8. Kansas. Hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. near near me. Wouldn't it be ironic if uh, part of her crew was at the college I work at? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have one more person for check night for season three. There you go. <laughs> Since I've got my 10-year-old niece addicted to the show now. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. She was bouncing off the walls for, after the finale. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun watching it with a, a young one. <laughs> Tell yeah. you what. But, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think um, what Tony Hale said last week about how this is one of the only shows out there that families can watch together, I I can't agree more about that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. My my daughter is 12 and my son is 9, and they both sit there right right with me. Get out the popcorn. It's Chuck Knight. Yep. Yeah. Great family time. Mm-hmm. Cool. And our next one is another ChuckTV.net member, Audrep. And he or she says, great, marvelous podcast. It's amazing to see so many of the cast and crew joining their voices to those of the fans. The only ones that were sadly missing, as far as I can remember, were Yvonne Strahovski and the actor who plays Lester. Uh, that's Vic Sahai. Can't remember his name, uh, he or she says. Uh, but instead, it was great to have the behind-the-camera people also show their support. Many thanks to all the podcast team for putting this together for the fans in these long days as we brace ourselves for the fateful decision that NBC will unleash upon the world soon. Getting this kind of positive energy from the cast and crew really makes my day. Yeah, and you, and you know, it, it is a good point. I mean, when we had the thank you letters sent to Ali Adler a few weeks ago, and she got back to us and said that, that she had never in her long career received a fan letter. It really shows you that there are a few people that are in the spotlight and not even all of the cast. And the minor cast members and uh, and the crew and creative team often don't get any spotlight. So it's great to be able to give them a, a voice. Exactly. And to hear how enthusiastic they are about the show and, and how much they love it and are invested in it. Um, you know, I, I, I said earlier, I think that really comes through. Um, in season two, I think we really saw just how much everyone was loving working on this show. And that's what ma- has made the season even better than season one, which I didn't think was going to be possible. Yep. All right. Well, we'll move on to the cannibal kid hmm, who posted this comment at checktv.net. He said, holy crap, what an awesome podcast episode. Props to everyone at checktv.net and the podcast for getting this together. It was an epic experience listening to the show creators and actors raving about the upcoming finale and their love of Chuck. It really feels like the outpouring of support that happens when television titans like Seinfeld or Friends come to a close. Chuck is the best thing to come onto my television in a long time. It has elevated my view of a buy more like job. It has reminded me the importance of my friends and family. And most importantly, it has taught me to love again. I love you, Yvonne, the cannibal kid. <laughs> 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 See, so Chuck changes lives. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. But you, you know, one thing I wanted to mention is that when all of these guys were last week in the last podcast were raving about the finale, were any of them wrong? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. Not one bit. Yep. Yeah. I'm having such a hard time not talking about it, but I know we just do not have the time for it in this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but. I'm, I'm eager to uh, get started on the you know the next podcast because I have thoughts. Yeah, and I have thoughts. Oh yeah, <laughs> and most of them in the exclamation points. <laughs> yeah. That's right, and and all caps. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, we have one more um, just question that came in that I wanted to read for you, um, and it's from Gary, and he says, if by some weird t- twist of fate NBC makes the bonehead decision of the century to not renew Chuck, what happens to ChuckTV.net? I will assume that at some point it will have to be shut down, but we will still have some time to talk about the show, what the what the cast is up to now on the DVDs before the site enters cyber heaven, right? I know it is kind of depressing, but I was wondering what would happen. Well, Gary, we don't think there's going to be any need to make this decision, but should that uh, should NBC break our hearts, ChuckTV.net is not going anywhere for a good long time. We know that it's uh, the home to a lot of fans who would miss it a lot, so uh, we would definitely keep it up. Uh, for the foreseeable future 
as long as there are people to come and leave comments on our blog and post on our forum and there's any kind of news to share about the cast and crew and, and what they're up to then the site will stay yep and and absolutely and i think the podcast too um we talked about this earlier in the podcast about how there are many countries that are just now starting to experience Chuck or maybe have only seen season one, haven't seen season two yet. And as well, we got a lot of emails from people who, even in North America, just discovered Chuck like a month ago or two months ago and are really quickly getting caught up. And I know all of those people, even if the show were canceled, would want this fan resource. So we, we definitely will keep it up. There's a lot of people that we want to talk to in interviews as well, like Benita and Ryan and, and a number of people we, we haven't had on the podcast yet who, even if the show were canceled, I'm sure would love to spend time and, and talk about the show because they love it so much. Yep, I think so. And I'm certainly game. Yep, it's a labor of love. Even if uh, there's nothing new to watch, there's still you know, plenty to discuss. Yep. I mean, these this show is so layered that... Even on episode 21 of our podcast, we still haven't covered everything. Not yeah. even close. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you're not getting rid of us that easy. That's, That's true. Right. Yeah. But keep those emails coming, though. You know, keep talking to us. Keep shouting at us. And uh, when you do send in the emails, mention the city and country where you're emailing from. We invite you to send in your emails with photos if you want. Um, and if you want them to appear in the podcast, leave an audio comment or question on Mel's voicemail at 310-594-3755. And you can also uh, record it yourself and email it to us. Those, those work too. But uh, we are going to come to a close here. We obviously don't have any spoilers because what could we possibly spoil? But the things we do want to remind you about is please keep active uh, you can definitely email us and remind you about the email list uh, that we're putting together to remind you about voting and also new podcast releases. Uh, I do want to apologize. It was so crazy with the finale and putting the last couple of podcasts together that uh, there were a few people that had emailed, and I, I haven't actually started up the email list, but I will do that for the next podcast. So please do email us if you want to be on that email list. And a reminder of what that's about is uh, we would send you a monthly reminder to remind you to vote at Podcast Alley and also to let you know when there's new podcast releases, just in case you haven't checked your iTunes yet. And don't forget that you can vote for us and leave comments at podcastalley.com and also at iTunes. And we encourage you again to email us with your questions and comments. We'll be, of course, putting together our podcast uh, covering the last four episodes of the season. So we'll be reading more listener emails during that. So email us with your questions and comments. And join us next time for episode commentaries. And we hope news about a third season of Chuck. There'll be plenty for us to talk about next time. Thanks for listening. And a shout out to Vern and the boys. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.